In Creo 4, we started to uh, build out our design tools, introducing capability uh, to build rich lattice structures directly inside Creo. We introduced the new lattice feature, allowing you to build 2.5D, 3D lattices as parametrically controlled features directly with inside Creo. Because they're directly inside Creo, we can use our analysis tools to go and analyze those components or those features, that geometry. Because they're inside Creo, because they're parameters, because we can analyze them, we can then also optimize them. Again, directly inside Creo, being able to vary those lattice structures to achieve your engineering goals. Now, we continue to expand upon those in Creo 5, and in Creo 6, we started to introduce more complex lattice structures as well, starting with formula-driven lattices. Now, the most common form of formula-driven lattice is probably the gyroid shape. Now, why a formula-driven lattice is important to, to additive manufacturing? Well, not only is their shape um, uh, extremely strong and rigid, but more importantly, they're actually self-supporting in their nature. What that means is when I print them, I don't need to create additional support structures to support the build process. That reduces material cost, but more importantly, it reduces or even eliminates the need to do a post-process operation on your printed part to remove those support materials. So leveraging the existing lattice structure we have, or lattice feature we have inside Creo, you can now simply specify a formula-driven lattice as a unit cell, and it will then populate your volume with that lattice structure even allowing you the ability to vary the density of those complex lattices for you. <clears throat> now, as more and more companies are looking into additive manufacturing, wanting to optimize their shapes for additive manufacturing, looking at different types of lattices, they're starting to want to build their own lattice structures, their own geometric shape that they can then populate and propagate within a volume. So we also introduced in Creo 6 the ability to use user-defined lattices. Here you can simply create a regular Creo part, a Creo part that represents your lattice cell. The lattice feature will then be able to consume that geometry and populate it with inside your volume, allowing you and giving you the flexibility to build whatever lattice structures you want moving forward. And the third type of lattice that we introduced was stochastic lattices. Now, stochastic lattices are beam-based lattices, but they're lattices that conform or follow the shape of your model, either allowing you to build a pure skin lattice over the top of your shape or even build the internal volume as lattice structures as well. And what's key about these here is the density or complexity or quantity of lattices that you can build. So these are used extensively, for example, in the medical industry where you're looking to build an implant that the bone can graft onto, or even in noise suppression uh, scenarios. But here we have the ability not to build hundreds of lattices, not thousands of lattices, but hundreds of thousands of very detailed lattices. Be able to build those inside Creo as a feature that will regenerate, that you can visualize um, and calculate mass properties, etc.